Today, your hand becomes a controller inside a browser, just like that. We're using 3JS, of course, with media pipe hands and rapier physics. Let's go. Let's go. I'm offering memberships in my channel. It's a great way for you to support your favorite creators like me. There's two tiers. A supporter tier includes early access to new videos and members only polls and whatnot. And sponsor tier includes all of those benefits plus access to members only videos. So I hope you consider becoming a member and I really appreciate those of you who already are. Great. So the basic architecture looks like this. You're taking a stream from the webcam, piping it into media pipe. Um, we're creating kinematic colliders using Rapier, wire, uh, connecting those to meshes inside of 3JS to knock stuff around. We render and repeat. That's the basic workflow. We're starting with the basic boilerplate, the standard setup with a scene, perspective camera, WebGL renderer, orbit controls, and an animation loop. Nothing fancy. We're going to use the WebGL renderer this time mainly because I couldn't get the Rapier debug view to work with WebGPU at the moment. That's the only reason. You could totally use this with WebGPU as well. So let's connect the webcam to our media pipe. I'm calling this get vision stuff method. It's returning the video and the hand land marker. Now, what the hell is a hand land marker? I don't know. Let's have a look. So we create the video element and then we request get user media mm -hmm. and we start the video stream. We set it and we move on. Now we create a video plane. We're going to create a plane inside of 3JS and slap our video onto the plane so that we can see ourselves on screen. Okay, let's initialize Rapier physics. We'll just, it builds a world. And for now, our gravity is neutral. We'll create our own custom force in a sec. Next, we spawn our targets, which are these 3JS logos. Well, they're really just tetrahedrons that look like 3JS logo logos. We're going to create 20, you create 40 or 100 of these simple meshes. Next, we create these hand colliders, these little white circles you see on my fingers and hand. 21 of these are what we get. Looks like four for each digit and then one for like the base of the hand. Okay, 21 of these guys. And we'll add those to a collider group. A quick note about the terms I'm using here. I have a get body and a get collider. The body term I'm re referring to passive physics objects. Okay, that's these 3JS logos. The colliders are what I'm calling these little white circles on my hands. These are the ones that are controlled directly by my hand and they interact with the things that are just our physics objects, so to speak. So the animation loop, we're gonna update all the bodies. We're gonna step on each frame to update the physics engine, and then we're gonna render. That's it. These lines to set the video mesh scale, I'll explain in a second. But I wanna add in here a logic to handle the hand tracking. So let's put that in there. We just check to see that we have hand landmarks. And for each landmark, we'll take its position and we'll pass it to our um, colliders, these little dots. I call update on each one of those. And Bob's your uncle. Now, if it doesn't find my, the hand, I'm telling it, move those objects off screen. And that last line, I'm saying, scale our video mesh to match the resolution of our video stream. Right now, the resolution is set to 640 by 480. I haven't figured out a way to modify the video stream resolution. That's why this is so grainy. If you know of a way, please leave a comment. Let me know. Okay, let's talk about what's inside of get bodies. It's got two methods that we need. Get bodies to get those logos and get colliders for my, my hand landmarks. In the original version of this, I'm using icosahedrons. So what I've done instead is to load up this model 
of uh, a tetrahedron. Um, a quick aside about this tetrahedron. I exported this from 3JS to get the primitive. Then I loaded it into Blender and subdivided each face to get all those triangles. Exported it from Blender and loaded it back into 3JS. And then I'll take, I'll create two objects. One for the white material. Whoops. That was awesome. And one for the, the black edges. Okay. Real quick. I load the GLTF. And then I, I'm going to pluck out its geometry. Because I, I just want the geometry. I don't want the mesh or the material. And I scale it to fit my scene. Your results may vary. Okay, next I'm going to set up the physics body. And I do that by... I'm going to initialize its position somewhere randomly. If I reload, you'll see. They start from some random position and then they converge on the center point. And the center point is set to 2 on the x-axis, 0, 0. I'll create a new rigid body description, a dynamic one. That just means it's, it's not being controlled by like a mouse or, or my hand. And I create a convex hole. Now that's a custom collider. Often you'll see a sphere or a box a collider this, or a, a cylinder, but this is a, a convex hole, meaning shape the collider to the geometry specifically, and then I create it. Great. Now that I've created a physics body, I create the 3JS object. In this case, mesh basic material and a mesh, and I scale it to the, my correct size. I'm using a mesh basic material, so no shading, no lighting effects. And for the wireframe, the black wireframe, I'm using the wireframe geometry too. And, and then I'm adding that as a child of the mesh so that they always move together. For each world.step call from Rapier, I copy that rigid body's translation and rotation to the mesh I created. Now, for the hand landmarks, I'm just creating an icosahedron. You can't tell, it just looks like a circle, giving it a white material. Same physics setup, only this time it's kinematic position based. And that just means I control the position. It still collides and interacts with objects in the physics scene. For the update method, I'm passing in the position and just moving the physics objects and the meshes to that position. Pretty simple. The last thing I want to talk about is the debug render. Um, you may find that it's not working as expected or it just doesn't have the feel you like. This is where debug render is your friend. Let's enable that real quick. And there you, there you have it. All those points are hints at the, um, the rapier physics bodies that are in the scene. A really handy way to see what's happening in your physics scene. Turn that off. So some ideas for variations of this, you can, you can alter the appearance of the model. Um, if I were wearing my other 3JS t-shirt that's black with a white design on it, I would invert these colors. You can use different models, of course. You can have a pinch to grab add some logic that detects the position of a key landmarks to have a pinch action like that and you could grab it um what else you could add particles i think it would be cool using the web gpu renderer to add um trails for each of the hand movements just just for the hand markers not for anything else in the scene what do you think would be a great idea let me know in the comments below and thanks so much for watching i'll see you in the next one